Chairman, thank you. Thank you for, for uh, joining us today on this important topic. Let me start with Mr. Polensky. Uh, the term, terms of federal consumer privacy bill, um, consumers, I believe, would benefit if Congress provides clear and measurable requirements in a statutory text while also including uh, a level of flexibility in uh, the form of narrow and specific rulemaking authorities, uh, presumably to the FTC. Uh, that would help account for evolving uh, technological developments. My questions are, how should this committee approach providing the FTC with rulemaking authority, and do you see value in what some of us have been calling strong guardrails around that rulemaking authority to preserve certainty to consumers that we aim to protect? I think our proposed legislation, the committee's proposed legislation, uh, which hopefully will come forward, should put as much detail as we can put in the bill because I think there are going to be key issues to negotiate. But clearly there are going to be areas that uh, are going to need more time uh, where progress of time is going to require perhaps updates and nuance, and the FTC certainly needs APA rulemaking authority to fill those gaps. But I do think setting the parameters so that the considerations that the FTC should look at can be spelled out so that businesses can anticipate, so that the commission heads, no matter what party is in leading and so forth, in the right direction, I think is gonna be critical. This isn't the, like, exactly the right words, I don't think, but the, th the theory that I have is that we have to provide lots of certainty, but not too much certainty. Just yeah. wh where, where do we find that sweet spot that uh, allows this to work well today and into the future? That's exactly um, right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Dixon, um, you indicated in your testimony, I, I think I'm quoting this about right, the aim equally of a consistent and harmonized data protection law across the EU is to ensure a level playing field for all businesses and a uh, consistent digital market in which consumers can have, a tr can have trust. Would you have, con let me ask it this way, would you be concerned that EU consumers' trust in the digital market would be undermined if the EU lacked a harmonized approach to privacy? And related to that is, do you think the GDPR has provided clearer privacy requirements to companies than if each EU country adopted a different privacy requirement? So I think certainly it would be the case that uh, EU service users' trust would be undermined if we don't give full effect to this harmonized regulation now in the EU um, and uh, more a case of companies rather than consumers at the moment arguing that uh, some of the harmonization is not uh, coming into effect uh, as anticipated because of member state choices that have been made. So the European Data Protection Board is a grouping of all of the EU national supervisory authorities and we're working very hard to give effect to a harmonized implementation through guidance that we issue but also through a cooperation and consistency mechanisms that mean when I conclude the investigations I referenced earlier, I will have to bring my decision to the European Data Protection Board and take utmost account of the views of the other EU 27 in finalizing my decision. Um, so I think the harmonization is extremely important, not just in terms of the level playing field, but in terms of, of the consumer trust. Thank you. Um, a question that, I mean, part of the conversation here has been uh, things are getting better. People are more interested in privacy. Um, it, but we've also talked about how difficult it is to, and what you're thinking about when you opt in and lop, opt out, uh, where the responsibility lies. Are consumers uh, currently considering privacy practices when choosing between an online service provider? Are there enough companies using privacy as a competitive advantage? Anybody, any consumer like paying attention to this? and there's now an economic reward for privacy protections? I'd, I'd like to speak to that. I think, look, when we passed the California bill last year, we were working with Satya Nadella, um, Tim Cook at, at Tatcha at, at Microsoft, Tim Cook at Apple, Mark Benioff at Salesforce. 
they absolutely know that that, it, it, you, you, there's no way Apple and Microsoft don't see that as a competitive advantage now, which Senator Moran I think is a very healthy thing. Um, but, but, but that alone is not enough. I mean, you still need, that's why I said my earlier comments about how important it is for the Senate and for the Congress to pass comprehensive, strong federal privacy protections. But there's no question, just look at Apple's marketing campaign that's out there right now. They're all over privacy. We meet with them at the top levels all the time. They have decided this is both the right thing to do and also the right thing to do for their business. And so is Microsoft. So the wave is coming. What a, what a great blend that will be if we do our jobs correctly and the consumer demands this from, the, from their providers. Agreed. Uh, let me ask a final question, just a yes or no answer. If, um, if Congress were to enact uh, this, what we hope is meaningful uh, privacy legislation, would you each support uh, a, the Attorney General of our various states having enforcement capabilities? Yes, I would strongly encourage that as well as um, state enforcement agencies. Completely agree. Absolutely think state AGs are critical and a private right of action is a good idea too. AGs have a key role. Uh, thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.